Are you a first time buyer, move up buyer, or maybe you're just curious about how to get the best possible interest rate and terms on your future mortgage. Nobody cares about your money more than you do. And that's why you need to take these four essential steps to ensure you get the best deal possible starting right now. Hello everybody and welcome. My name is Albert Pereira. I am a licensed realtor of 25 years living in beautiful Kamloops, British Columbia. And in this video, we're going to talk about the dark art of mortgage interest rate and term negotiation. And to some people, this can be daunting and overwhelming. But in this video, I'll be very clear in the process that you'll need to take to protect yourself and get yourself an awesome deal. Now, before we start, I need to remind you that I am a real estate agent overall. And if I can help you with real estate related problems of any kind, whether you're a first time buyer, move up buyer or a seller, please reach out to me and use my vast experience and passion for real estate to your advantage. Let's get started. The first thing you need to do is talk to your existing bank or credit union and explain to them what you plan to do. Now, whether you're a first time buyer or move up buyer, or you're planning to refinance because your mortgage term is coming to an end, explain to them exactly what your goal is and that you will be shopping your mortgage rate around. Now, this puts your banker on alert that they cannot just offer you the shelf rate that they offer to everyone else that isn't shopping around and ensures that they're going to sharpen their pencil when they offer you a mortgage rate moving forward. The second part of what you need to do in this first step is to contact a mortgage broker. Now it's wise for you to ask for referrals from friends, coworkers, relatives, and ask them who did you have a great experience with in terms of mortgage brokerage? And you should get some great names from that. Now you should contact those mortgage brokers directly and ask them what you can expect, what they need from you, how they're going to be compensated and any costs you might be responsible for. You want to know that upfront. Now that you've determined all that and you've decided to work with a particular mortgage broker. And when I say mortgage broker, they don't work for one particular financial institution. They will shop your mortgage around to many different lenders so that you get the best possible rate. Once you've decided on the mortgage broker that you want to work with, then you can go about getting pre-approved. Step two, pre-qualification and interest rate lock-in. Now, your mortgage broker is going to need to pre-qualify you and they do that by getting your work history, employment letters, uh, pay stubs. They'll also need to do a credit report and be sure that anybody who pre-qualifies you does in fact pull a credit report because you don't want to go through this entire process and find the home of your dreams and then find out there's something on your credit report that you didn't know about and now you've got to back out of everything because you've got to clean up this little thing you didn't know about. You'll also need to come up with a down payment and you can use a certain percentage of down payment starting at 5% and up using your TFSAs or RRSPs, but you'll need to pay that back eventually. Your mortgage broker will help you with all of this, but you need to know that they can only do their job if you provide them with all of the information they need. So the sooner you get that to them, the sooner you'll be pre-qualified. Now, once you get pre-qualified, it's important that you get an interest rate lock-in for the current interest rate. And hopefully that's a competitive rate and your mortgage broker will explain that to you. Now, the benefit of getting the rate lock-in, and it depends on the broker and the institution you're borrowing from, they can lock you in for 30, 60, or 90 days. And this is great for you because if interest rates go up, you get the lower rate. If they go down, you can use the lower rate to your advantage later. So be sure and get a solid pre-qualification and get that in writing and emailed to you so that you can provide that to your real estate agent or anyone else who wants to know that you're fully pre-qualified before you buy the home. And if you're pre-qualified, you can also use that to do a refinance on your existing home. So move forward, get the pre-qualification, get the rate lock-in and protect yourself and you should be okay from here. Step three is to go shopping. And when I say go shopping, I don't mean going to the mall. What you're going to be doing is having your mortgage broker and your banker compete 
for your business on the actual mortgage and shop the best possible rates and terms for you on this particular deal. Now, if you're refinancing, they will already have the details on your house, but if you're buying a house, they'll need the conditional and accepted contract of purchase and sale, which says subject to financing and subject to home inspection and subject to all these different things. Once the lender and the banker, the mortgage broker and the banker, know what property is you're buying and the terms and the actual property you're buying, they can compete on a level playing field in terms of the best rates and terms they can give you for your particular mortgage. Now, one thing I'm going to mention is that if you have a smaller down payment, that is five or 10% and you're getting CMHC financing, you will pay a cost for that. And there are private mortgage insurers as well. But because your mortgage is insured, you actually pay a lower interest rate. So don't be surprised if your interest rates are lower than you were quoted before. Step four, and this is the last step, is for you to review the different mortgage offers that have been provided to you by your banker and mortgage broker. And of course, your bank will have its best rate and terms, and the mortgage broker will provide um, perhaps several options from different lenders. And these could be life insurance companies, credit unions, trust companies, maybe companies you've never actually heard of. And that doesn't really matter. But you have to be sure that you don't just go for the absolute lowest interest rate because many of those low interest rates are coupled with very onerous and difficult terms. And you may find yourself having to pay huge penalties if you need to get out of the mortgage early, or they may not be portable if you wanna step up to a, a larger property or a different property later. And a lot of them won't allow you to prepay the mortgage or do weekly or bi-weekly payments, which can shorten up the length of your mortgage dramatically if you go that route. So be sure and check that you have, yes, a very low interest rate, but at the same time, you have favorable terms that are flexible because life changes fast and you wanna be sure that you can make changes without having to spend a great deal of money simply because you got the very lowest interest rate out there. Now, if you're buying a property, you're gonna have a contract of purchase and sale and the bank will have to get back to you with approval of the actual house or condo or whatever it is you're buying and they may want an appraisal of that property to make sure that the value is there for what you're buying. And once that's done and you've decided that all the other conditions on your contract of purchase and sale are satisfied as well and you're happy with the home inspection, then you can move forward with, with removing your subjects and you are now locked in and obligated to go with that mortgage. So congratulations, you've got a great mortgage and people have competed for your business and you've decided that the interest rate and the terms work for you and you got a much better deal than if you'd stayed with your bank in the first place. I hope you got excellent so, value out of this video. I had a great time making it and I know that people have saved thousands upon thousands using the methods I've described in this video. Please hit the like button, smash that button because it helps the YouTube algorithm and hit the subscribe button for content that I upload every week. It motivates me to make better and better videos all the time. If I can help you with real estate related problems, whether buying or selling, please reach out to me in the show notes below or at the end of this video. Thank you for watching.